I want to use MIDI more in my synth, but the modules I made in the past took up too much space. I think I can do better. In this video, I plan on making a more compact MIDI to trigger and MIDI to gate slash CV module and make it expandable without needing more MIDI cables wrapping around the synth. So to start, I'm going to disassemble the MIDI modules I've previously built as I plan on using the circuit board I made and the jacks from the old module in the new version. Then it was off to the laser to cut a new faceplate that features both trigger outputs and jacks for CV and gate outputs on a single unit. And there we are, a fresh faceplate that smells just a little bit of forest fire. I did need to clearance the LED holes a bit. It's always easier to take more material away than it is to put it back. Once that was done, I installed the LEDs and the jacks. I started with the solder work. I connected all the grounds together then I added a current limiting resistor to the trigger output and the LEDs. With that done, the circuit board from the previous version was brought back in and reattached to the CV and gate output jacks. The trigger jacks required new connections, which were added to the microcontroller. 40 pin chip had plenty of unused pins, and combining the software from the CV slash gate and trigger modules was fairly straightforward. And the final connection to the faceplate was the MIDI jack. Next, I wanted to add a ribbon cable connector to the circuit board so that the MIDI data could be passed to expansion boards without cables going through the front of the faceplate. So right about here looks good. Now to solder it in place and make the connections on the PCB. I did the soldering with a ribbon cable connector in place so that I was sure there was enough room to attach it when I was done. Now to make some CV slash gate expansion PCBs. I bought some new 8x12 and FR4 sheets for this project with only a half ounce of copper, as the three ounce sheets I had previously used took forever to etch. And since I already had the laser out, I cut the face plates at the same time. I tried a new technique for cutting the PCBs. Instead of using a Dremel and a cutoff wheel, which makes tons of dust, I got a mini table saw. Unfortunately, the blade it came with was not appropriate for FR4, and after about six inches, it was done. After this, I did order the correct diamond-coated blade, but I finished the project with a Dremel and a cutoff wheel. And here are the boards cut to size. Into the ferric chloride they go. Here's a time-lapse of an etch, real time about half an hour. And there we have it, three etched boards. With a quick dip in some paint thinner, the resistor was removed. And now it's time for some drilling. My next big project might be a dust collector for this drill press. I'm constantly having to clear the dust to see what I'm doing. 
Assembly of the expanders was started with the faceplate. Jacks were put in place, LEDs were dropped in, and the grounds were all soldered together. Next all the parts were added to the PCBs. There ended up being quite a few jumps on there, but in the end I was able to route all the traces. Next step was attaching the PCB to the faceplate. The LEDs and some short wires to the gate connections made for a fairly solid attachment. Finally, the CV outputs were added. An expansion module was done. And off camera I did this two more times. Once all the soldering is done, software was flashed onto the microcontroller, and all the chips were added to the board and the expansion module was done. Now a word on how this all works. Here are all the modules laid out on the bench. Power for all the modules is supplied by this connection here to the main unit. MIDI signal comes in here, and is converted to a logic level signals by this chip here. Then the MIDI signal goes to the microcontroller on the main unit and to the ribbon cable that connects to the expansion modules. The ribbon cable also supplies power simplifying the connections. Now let's look at an individual expansion board. These dip switches here control the starting MIDI channel that the board will look for from channels 1 to 16. Each expansion board having a CV output that changes with the note on command, a gate output, an output tied to the sustain pedal command, and a CV output tied to the modulation wheel. With each board having three sets of outputs that look for data on three successive MIDI channels, starting with the one that's set by the dip switches. Now to see the expansion modules in action. I have them all set to the same channels, so the outputs would be the same, but in practice, you would set them three channels apart to maximize the number of independent channels to work with. Pressing a key on the keyboard, the gate light comes on. The corresponding CV output also changes to match the note depressed. Turning the modulation wheel and its CV output changes. Press the sustain pedal and that output goes high. Change the MIDI channel on the keyboard and now the modules respond to the new channel. Well there you go. All the MIDI gate, CV, and trigger outputs you could ever want. Hope you all enjoyed, and thanks for watching.